I've always wanted to try Hackbox Pro Labs, but one of the biggest roadblocks for me was always the price. In Australia, it's $75 per month, which is just huge. That being said, I've always believed it would be great value despite the expense. So last month, I set a goal to complete Hack the Box Dante within the one month, so I'm only paying once. In this video, I'll break down Dante and Hack the Box Pro, what I enjoyed about the lab, some tips to get through it, and a little bit of a mini review. So consider a sub to the channel if you're new here, and let's get into it. So Hack the Box Dante is a pro lab, so this means it is not included in the free VIP or VIP Plus subscriptions when you pay for Hack the Box. You have to buy a separate subscription on top. It's a fully integrated network, however, so it is no longer just a single machine, it is an entire network, which means there's active directories, fake users, fake, fake files, just like a real red team engagement. So this lab is of the easy category. So this means you don't need to do all the evasion of EDR or evading a SOC. So this isn't required. So in this lab, we have a total of 14 machines and 28 flags, as you can see here. These are spread out across various different machines and different challenges, which cover things like enumeration, exploitation, exploit development, privilege escalation, pivoting and lateral movement, as well as Active Directory attacks. So my experience with Hack the Box Dante is I picked this up to sharpen my skills. As a offensive security manager, I don't get heaps of time to really sink into projects anymore. So I found this as a great experience to really try to sharpen my skills back up and what I didn't expect was how nostalgic it made me feel when uh, thinking about when I did the OSCP. It felt right on that level of difficulty too. So with everything, enumeration is key. A few times I had to circle back on a few things that I made assumptions about because it just was inaccurate or I didn't enumerate thoroughly enough. And of course, remember this is a live environment. So looking at things like files and users and patterns of behavior and everything like that, will help a lot. Don't assume that it is a dead environment. The Active Directory attacks, however, were a little bit light. I was hoping to really sharpen this area for me because I haven't touched it in considerably long time. And while I, while the lab did include a few Active direct Directory things, it didn't go so much into extensive detail. It doesn't cover topics like constrained delegation, for example. The exploit development was great. It was a bit light and a bit of the same flavor as, you know, your standard Win32 buffer overflow, as well as one on Linux as well, which took me a little bit longer than I expected. Lateral movements, again, is another one of my weak spots, and I thought Dante would help with this. However, most of the machines were only a single hop away. So after you get initial access into the first one, then most of the machines are accessible directly, directly from that. So it didn't really give me that experience of having to tunnel multiple layers deep and then tunnel the traffic back because whatever machine you ended up on could hit your attacker machine directly. So using the path of least resistance, that is how I did things. So it's a little bit of a missed opportunity for a challenge here though. Now for my tips for this lab, overall, I think this is actually really straightforward. It took me about one month to do, just short of, and it's really in the same flavor as OSCP. So your standard exploit and privilege escalation, a little bit of active, active Directory. However, now with the OSCP featuring more Active Directory, I'd suggest maybe Raster Labs or Zephyr would have been a better fit in hindsight. With pivoting, I think always drawing a diagram on how you are mapping this out, especially when it comes to things like port for forwarding down multiple layers, this really just helps you understand what you're doing um, and allows you to lay things out logically. Otherwise it is so easy to get confused doing this sort of thing. So anytime I talk about pivoting, I always like to bring up this article, explore hidden networks with double pivoting. This really just helps you understand the concepts and really helps map out things in a way that really makes sense. So you can then replicate this in your environment. Now this was really, really handy for the PTP exam, but it is still very useful for Hack the Box Dante as well. And lastly, my final tip is keep very good notes, especially when it comes to resuming the, this lab. Because you're gonna be multiple layers deep, when you are resuming the lab, you need to have good steps to get back to where you were quite fast. Because when you turn off that VPN connection, everything dies, unless you wanna keep your VM on with your computer on 24 seven. So good note taking here and good resum resumption steps here will be critical. So should you try this? Well, firstly, do you meet the prerequisites? Are you comfortable with the pen test workflow? So your information gathering, your enumeration, your exploitation and your privilege escalation steps. 
Have you got a bit of experience on normal Hack the Box or other CTFs like VonHub or Proving Grounds or TrackMe or anything else? And are you willing to do a bit of research on things like Active Directory, exploit development, and pivoting? If yes to all three, this is probably a great place to start your first fully integrated network. So that brings me naturally onto what you would actually use this lab for, what you would want it for. And I think when I did the OSCP, this would have been great practice. Nowadays, I think it's a still good practice, but not as in line with what the exam covers. It is really, really fun. So for me, it was great to pretty much bring back all the skills that I had and sharpen up on, a, on them a little bit. At no point did I ever feel overwhelmed. It was pretty straightforward. It was fun. It was a great warm up. And now I will think about trying Zephyr or Raster Labs or maybe even Offshore other pro labs. And you get some nice credentials for LinkedIn as well. So before I get into my mini review, that brings me to the topic of what do you think is the most important thing for offensive security roles to have on your resume or your LinkedIn? Leave your comments below. So now onto my good old pros and cons. This was a really fun refresh of knowledge at about the level of OSCP. It was good fun. I didn't find it too difficult at any, any point and they were really doable challenges. And with the Hack the Box subscription, you get access to every single pro lab in the one subscription. But what about the cons? Well, the price is extremely expensive, especially if you're not in the US. $75 a month is a lot. Now, there isn't a lot of competition in this space, so it kind of gives Hack the Box the ability to charge what they want. And you're only really going to be working on one lab at a time. And when you're in that lab, you don't have exclusive access to that lab. You are sharing it with a handful of other people. So in my experience, anywhere between three to five other people. Not a huge deal, but people leave artifacts around making exploit paths a little bit easier than they need to be. Or sometimes, some very rarely, you get a bit of instability. It is now a little bit outdated. So a lot of the servers in there, you probably wouldn't see much nowadays in most organizations. And I was hoping that the lab would be a little bit more sequential rather than just sort of machine after machine just in one lab. There was some sequentialness to it. There was some pivoting, but largely it was everything through that initial double pivot. So when you're done, you get a nice Hack the Box certificate like this one right here showing your achievement. But that's basically it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this sort of content, be sure to give it a like as it helps people like you find content like this. Be sure to tune in to see any of my other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.